The other day, I was working with a friend on AnyType, and he really wanted to set up his passwords in AnyType, kind of like a password manager application, but instead of being a standalone application, he just wanted to do it in AnyType. And I thought it was a kind of interesting way to use AnyType, and it really showed a lot of the power or a lot of the capabilities that AnyType has. So I wanted to show you guys what we did, how we did it, and maybe this will inspire you to do something similar. Now, to be clear, before we get started, I'm not saying that AnyType is the best way to store your passwords. I am not responsible for anything that happens if you decide to take all of your passwords to your bank account and put them in a third-party software like AnyType. It is encrypted, but if somebody just opens your computer, they can go open your AnyType and view it like that. I think there are more secure options, but I think that this is a good opportunity to see how AnyType works and maybe to give you ideas on other things that you could set up in a similar fashion. So without further ado, this is how I set up passwords using any type. The first place we'll want to go is to the library because we're going to be making a new object type for our passwords. Now, just as a reminder, everything at any type is stored as an object. If you want to make a new page, if you want to make a new note, if you want to make a collection, all of these things are different object types and each of them has their own set of relations that connect them in different ways. So for example, almost everything has a tag. Now you could remove this if you wanted to, but Everything by default has a tag and you can use that to link things together. If I tag a page as let's say school and I also tag a project as school, then the two will be related in that way. So let's make a new type. We're gonna go up here, we're gonna type password. We're gonna create type of password and now we're here editing a new type. We can change the icon and we'll just make it a key because that seems to make sense. We'll do that, I guess. And now here's where the fun part comes in. This is where you get to design what you want your passwords to look like. You could just leave it like this. You could just say, well, here's my password and that's all I need. But we can do a little more than that. All right, so I'm gonna make a new relation called a username. We're gonna create new relation username. We'll leave it as text for now and we'll create. Now, what is this going to do? This will make this almost a data field for every password. So every password that we make is going to have this field of username. Why is that important? Well, this way we can use that kind of as an aspect of the data that we can sort by. So if you want to see every password that uses the same Gmail account or every password that has the same username, then you can easily look that up. Whereas if you just had this be text inside of your password, it would be a lot harder to do that. Let's also make a new template. We'll go up here, we'll click this, we'll leave the title blank, obviously, and then we'll put a little bit of information in here. So the title is probably the web page that this is for or the account that this is for. We want to have our username in here, we want to have our password, and maybe any peripheral information, you know, security questions, a PIN number, that sort of thing. So let's first start by laying these out. We'll go toggle. Okay, so we've got that. How are we going to start filling it out? Well, obviously this is a template, so we'll want to leave it blank, except for that username field that we used before. Obviously, if I put up my username in this toggle, then it wouldn't show up in that username field. So to get a relation into the text of a note, so to put a relation in here that we could edit, what we can do is go up to this triangle up here. We're gonna grab username because we remember we added it to this object type. We're gonna grab it, drag it, boop, right in there. And it formats it kind of odd. I don't know why, there we go. So now our username is stored in there. Our password, obviously we would put it in here. We don't really want that data being exposed. And then any of the additional info would go in here. You are more than welcome to design yours differently. This is just the most simple way you could do it. And remember, if you want to put other relations in here, like if you want your password to be stored like this, if you want the account name or you want the account details or something, you make it a relation and then you just grab it from here and you put it in here. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Let's quickly make a new password just to test it out. So you could go down here and right click and it'll bring up all of these. You can also search by your object types if it's not showing up here, but password is right here. We'll do this. We'll go up to templates. We'll click on this template and we'll say this is Gmail. I will make the username. Now, this isn't super useful to us right now because obviously there's no easy way to find it. Now, of course, we could press Command S and go looking for it and say Gmail, or could even look it up by info and it would come up because that's in there. But that's kind of a challenging way to look for it, especially if we had lots of passwords. So let's make two things happen. First, let's change the way this template is implemented. And second, let's make a set of all of our passwords. So first to change the template. If you remember when we made a new password, 
we had to go up here and choose the template manually. To change that, so instead of having that template box up here, we can go to the library, we can click password, we can go to this template that we like. Remember, this is the one that's all filled out. And we click these three dots and we say set as default. Now, whenever we make a new password, it's going to autofill with this. Now, the reason I'm filling these out is because we'll want to have a decent amount of passwords when we make a set. So there's two ways we could do this. We could either go down to this button and make a new set, or to make it faster, we could go to the library, we could click on password, click on create new set of objects, and boom, here we go, set of password. We'll just say it like that. Boom, passwords. Now we're viewing all of our passwords. So what does this get us? Well, quite frankly, not a lot right now, but what we can do is we can go over here, we can click on this plus, we can click on username, and now we can see all of the usernames that are being utilized in these passwords. So what this does for us is that we can maybe sort by username ascending, and now it's grouped by different usernames and it's alphabetized like this. What this would allow us to do is see, well, these are both for the same Gmail account. So let's say, for example, we want to see these as cards. We'll call this cards. We'll lay it out as a gallery, and then we can choose what we want to see under each of them. So maybe we don't want to see the email here. Back to layout, we can go to relations, turn off username for this view, and now we can just see all of these. What we can also do is just say this is for the fake Gmail. We'll call it, we'll leave it as a grid. That's all we want. We'll add a filter to it new filter, username, all is, and then we enter in here, fake gmail at gmail.com, boom. Now what we're seeing is only the accounts, only the passwords that utilize this username. So obviously if we were to add username over here, it would show up right there. This could be pretty handy if you have a couple of email accounts and you want to store all of your passwords, but you will only want to be able to view certain ones by their username. And remember that's up in the filters, you can just choose which relation you want to filter by. And you can put multiple filters in here too, if you wanted to change, you know, if you wanted to filter them by their tag. So let's say I would tag, go in and tag this one as uh, email account. This one is for like a game. This is, you know, like my Epic Games login or something. Cool. Now what we could do is add a filter and say, I want to tag has all of, so it only can be add email. So this is only showing me my email password for my Gmail. That clearly, <laughs> clearly isn't very useful because it's only showing one password. But if I had, you know, multiple game accounts, then I could filter all of my game passwords on here as well. So maybe I had my, my Nintendo account or my Xbox account or what have you. So changing your views this way, changing your filters allows you to curate this data and the curation happens because of the relations. Because we made username a relation and because we have the tag relation, we can play around in the set and change the view based off of that. So hopefully that gave you a better understanding of what sets, what relations, what objects do in any type, and maybe it also inspired you to design something else. You could take this design and take it away from passwords and make it about your school notes or maybe about your tasks that you have to do. This was really meant as less of a tutorial and more of an example as to what any type is capable of. And I'd love to hear about or see the things that you're capable of designing, maybe some ideas as to how you could utilize this for other purposes. So yeah, if you have any ideas, let me know. Otherwise, stick around because there'll probably be more content on any type coming pretty shortly. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video.